first time here, hello, I'm Danielle and I make videos on spirituality, witchcraft, hoodoo, and topics of that nature. So if those things interest you, click that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Also join me on Instagram at Enchanted Ways for daily inspirational quotes and daily card readings. Now, before I get into this video, I first of all want to thank all of my new subscribers for subscribing and welcome you all to the Enchanted Ways family. We are almost at a thousand, y'all, and I do have a giveaway plan. Now, whether that's going to be a book or a service, I don't know yet, but I will let you all know when we cross that bridge. So, today's video, we're going to be continuing with an ongoing series that I told you all will be humming in the background for as long as this channel <laughs> exists because, I mean, there's a million and one herbs <laughs> in existence. And so the one we are going to be talking about today is ginger, the magical properties of ginger. Here lately for the past several months or so, ginger has become a go-to herb for me because I find whenever my spells get stuck in a rut like if i'm stuck in the signs phase or if i'm stuck in the phase where i'm getting some signs and a little bit of movement but i'm not getting the full manifestation of what it is i'm looking for i've noticed that when i add ginger if i do the same spell but add ginger to it it pushes past that rut and i get what it is that i'm looking for so ginger has become a go-to herb for me for that reason so its magical properties are virility, love, money, success, power, speed. It's a fiery form of protection. It protects from hag riding, AKA sleep paralysis, protects from nightmares and evil spirits, protects from jinxes, and also stops jinxes and curses in their tracks as well. And it increases passion. So some ways that you can use ginger, if you are someone that um, suffers from hag writing or you have nightmares, you can place either the whole root under your pillow or if you have it in loose form like powder or you have the ginger chips, you can put it in a little sachet bag, um, a little sachet pouch and put that under your pillow to protect you from nightmares and hag writing and any uh, spirit really um, that likes to mess with you in your sleep. You can also brew it into a tea and use it in a spiritual bath for any of the um, reasons that I just listed. So a love bath, money bath, success, power, protection bath, any of those things you can make a spiritual bath with ginger. Um, something quick and convenient that you can do, find you some ginger herbal tea. Tie two bags together and um, attach that, just hang that on your faucet so the hot water is running through the bags and infusing it with um, the herb. So you don't have to worry about brewing and straining and all of that and transferring to the tub. You can just kill two birds with one stone by um, doing the two bag method and tying it on or hanging it on your faucet. You can sprinkle the powder around your property, uh, sprinkle it at your doorway, sprinkle it across your window sills for protection. The spirits like to come in through the windows, come in through the doors. Um, you can sprinkle some powder in your footsteps if you suspect that you've stepped in some foot track magic or if you suspect that someone that you're around at the moment will take your footprint. Now, foot track magic is a very African um, form of magic. And it's basically laying powders, uh, herbs, oils, or even a sigil down somewhere where the person will have to walk over it. So if you've ever been to New Orleans, you'll know you got to watch out for stuff like that. There will literally be sigils and different things on the sidewalk. So if you're <laughs> a tourist there and you see something like that, wait until somebody like that's from there, see what they do. See if they walk over or do something and 
walk around it because it might be, you know, a protection syndrome. It might be safe to walk over or it could be a fucking curse and you don't want to walk over that. So that's foot track magic. Basically laying a spell down on the ground for a person to walk through and essentially be poisoned through their feet. Spiritually poisoned. So if you suspect you've stepped in anything like that, sprinkling ginger in your footstep can deactivate that. And if you suspect you're around someone who will take your footprint because your footprint is a personal concern. So rather than, you know, getting hair or something from a person, they see you walk. They saw the path you walk. All they got to do is go behind you and just sweep up where you stepped and use that as a personal concern um, in their spells against you. So if you are maybe at a spiritual event or something like that, uh, some type of workshop or you're in a very, you know, spiritual place like New Orleans where, <laughs> as uh, uh, Boko Rodney uh, 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 Coleman would say, people throw <laughs> work like they throw Mardi Gras beads. You never know. So you could just sprinkle the ginger powder in your footsteps. So if somebody collects it, they can't do anything with it. Um, so basically it's protecting you by protecting the personal concern if that makes sense so that's one thing you can do so keep a little ginger powder and a little vial <laughs> on you okay you'll find if you're very new to the path you'll find after a while after you've been on this path for a few years there will be certain things that you always keep on you and it doesn't have to be ginger um necessarily it's plenty of things that can cleanse away a curse and and protect you from it um but you'll find as you get deeper into the path you're gonna start just keeping certain things in your purse or in your wallet or in your pocket or you know just in the car um just in case <laughs> so ginger powder is definitely something useful to keep on you now if you want to or if you are starting a business like a restaurant um a dance club, a strip club, a brothel. <laughs> so you, you Vegas motherfuckers. Um, any kind of business like that. Any kind of business like that. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know why restaurant was lumped into that type of business. An elder told me that, so I'm relaying it to you all. The only thing, only connection I can make is that you know some restaurants do have dance floors and most if not all restaurants well i won't say all because as soon as i said that several restaurants popped in my head that doesn't serve um alcohol and beverages but i mean enough restaurants do serve alcohol so maybe that's why it's lumped in there with those particular types of businesses i'm not sure um um or maybe it's because you know people like to take dates to restaurants. That's the only thing I can think of why restaurants is lumped into lumped in with brothels and strip clubs and, <laughs> and dance clubs and stuff like that. But if you're opening up that particular type of business, what you would do after you physically clean the place, spiritually cleanse the place, you could burn some ginger on charcoal in the middle of the building, you know, get enough in there so it can really fill up the place and really do his job you would burn the ginger in there um again after you cleanse but before you decorate to liven the place up and really you know make it a place that people want to come and have a good time and spend their money so that's something you can do um a very powerful gambling mojo is made with ginger and you would take whole ginger root whole nutmeg and whole John the Conqueror root. And you would enchant each of those uh, roots individually and then enchant them all together. And you would dress it, dress it with fast luck oil and keep that in your mojo bag. Um, <clears throat> now the thing about this is that it's very powerful, but its effects don't last that long. Now, how long this mojo will last, I personally feel it depends on, one, how often you gamble, and two, how big you gamble. 
You know what I'm saying? If you're somebody like me and you might buy a lottery ticket once every few years or, hang on. Okay, so like I was saying, if you're somebody like me and you only gamble, you know, you buy a lottery ticket once every few years, you might go to the casino twice every, you know, couple of years or something like that, then the mojo might last you longer than somebody who gambles every day or every week. And even if you are someone who gambles every day or every week, but you only gamble for little amounts, your mojo might last longer than somebody who, you know, <laughs> just slapped down a hundred fucking thousand dollars on the table. So you would definitely have to experiment with that on an individual basis. So keep your fast luck <laughs> or on you just in case you need to, you know, go around the corner somewhere um, and uh, dress it some more and enchant it some more because that's what you would do. You feed mojos. Um, they are considered living things. I gave you a very condensed version <laughs> of making a mojo, but um, whenever you find any mojo's effects starting to decrease, it's not working as well as it used to, it's time to reanoint it and uh, feed it your intentions some more. So, yeah, experiment with that. Keep your little fast level in you, <laughs> just in case. It seemed like, okay, I played that hand and won. And now I can't catch a break. And maybe I need to go to the bathroom real quick <laughs> and re-enchant this mojo. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. It's powerful, but its effects do not last long. So, that's another way you can use ginger. And last but not least of my examples... That is, of course, there's a million and one ways to use ginger. But um, the last of my examples is if you consider, or if you not consider, but if you think you are under a love spell, if you think your love life has been jinxed, or if you think your libido has been tampered with, what you want to do is make a tea with ginger and dill. Uh, if you remember my um hold on. my love uncrossing oil video deal is in there because deal uncrosses any love jinxes so you would brew a tea of ginger and deal you strain the ginger and deal out let it cool and then rub your body down with this tea and air dry and you would do this for nine days and each day that you do this you want to brew a new batch of tea and while you're rubbing yourself you want to be visualizing and and have the intention that this love jinx is being removed from me it's being stripped off of me you know this libido jinx is being stripped off of me this love spell that i'm under is being removed just have that intention while you rub your body down and just take your time and visualize yourself being stripped of this influence that you don't want. Um, so, just to give a little example of being under a love spell. If you find yourself agreeing to go out on dates, or you're sleeping with people that you know in your heart of hearts, you are not attracted to this person physically, you aren't attracted to their personality. Like, you would not give this person the time of day. And every time, like, after you've been with this person, you're you just confused. Like, you can't figure it out. Why did I just do this? Why did I go on this date with this person? I know I don't like them. Like, what is going on? If you find yourself in that and you, you, you ain't dealing with no other issues, <laughs> you're not loose ass. You know what I'm saying? You have a specific type you have the specific standard you do things this way this is how you date this is how you operate in a relationship and you just find yourself going completely against all that you stand for and you can't figure out why it's like this person ain't even that cute like they ain't even that funny they ain't got no money <laughs> like there's no attraction here like they they're not that nice like there's nothing about this person that should make me act this way, and yet I am. It's possible that you're under a love spell, okay? Um, 
Because a lot of times, I sad to say, everybody putting love spells on folks really aren't in love with them and really have no interest in being in love or being in, you know, a committed relationship. They just want the ass. They just think you're pretty. They just think you're ha handsome. And they just want to get what they can get. So pay attention to stuff like that. Um, you might be under a love spell. And, you know, if you just seem like you can't catch a break, you keep going on fantastic first dates. And it's like, well, what is, what is going on? Why, why can't I make any meaningful connections with people? Or why it seems like every relationship I get in around the three-month mark or whatever, everything just goes to shit. Like, what is going on? What, everything seems fine. We're being honest with each other. We communicate well. I like his family. He likes my family. Like, what is going on? It could just be a jinx on your love life. Um, and again, if you can't get it up, <laughs> you can't get it up if your life depended on it. Uh, you drive in the Sahara Desert and like you have no medical issues. You're not on any medication. You've been to the doctor. Like there's nothing wrong. You're not stressed. You're not depressed. You, everything's fine. You're healthy and <laughs> you, you, you want to have sex and you just, you have no desire. And again, there's no medical issues going on or anything like that. You've gone, you, you've taking the proper actions to make sure, okay, there's no hormonal imbalances. Let's see what's going on. Is it the medication? Is it this? Because a lot of medications will fuck with your libido. But you've done your due diligence and it's not that. It could very well be that your libido has been tampered with. Especially if you find that you're only attracted to one person. Okay, like that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get it up for nobody else. I've been cheating on my wife for 25 years. Now I can't. <laughs> she got your ass. Okay, so um, <laughs> Ginger and Dill is great for that. So that is my last example, you guys. And as usual, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Um, and tell me what you all think about Ginger. How do y'all use Ginger? Is it a go-to for you? Um, and just let me know, <laughs> what do you think about ginger and how have you used it in the past? And have you found like I have that it really makes a difference and really packs when it says it's property is power. It means that <laughs> I'm telling you like identical spell, but then add ginger and it moves. So yeah, that's been my experience. So Anywho, any questions, any comments, leave them down below and I'll see you on the next video. I'm going to be starting um, a new series on weather magic, so I'm excited about that. So I will see you on that video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.